what's up everyone, Game Dad here. Now the time has finally arrived, I am going to be building my brand new PC. I have been gathering parts for months to get this thing built, and just had to wait until the release dates for the motherboard and CPU and the new GPU and everything. That way I could have the last of the parts to get this thing going. So, we are gonna dive right in, and I'm gonna showcase different parts of me getting this machine built, and showcase a little bit of what is going into it. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a Cinebench benchmark of my old machine, and then I'm gonna take a Cinebench benchmark of my new machine. That way we can see those performance numbers and the difference. The current desktop that I've been using, I built back in 2011, and it was a really solid mid-range build at the time. But this new build, I went all out. This is a very nice high-end build, and I cannot wait to start using this thing. In fact, I will probably end up editing this very video on that new machine. So, come with me as we build a new PC. All right, everyone, so here is the pile of stuff. This is everything going into the new machine. So I will quickly go over each thing that we've got here. As you can see right here, we have the EVGA Supernova 1000 G3 gold power supply, so that 1000 watt. For the motherboard, we have the ROG Crosshair 8 Hero Wi-Fi. Right here, we've got 32 gigs of Trident Z RGB RAM. We've got that Western Digital, and that is my NVMe drive, a WD Black. Right here are the RGB fans that are gonna be going into the case. Of course, we've got some cryo knot in there. Got the 2070 Super right there, that RTX card. Right here, we have the Ryzen 9 3900X. Cooling it all, we have the NZXT Kraken X62. And everything is going into my NZXT H500 white case. So, it is time to start building. All right, so before we can get to the good stuff and start installing the motherboard and all the fun components, I have some work that I need to do to the case and then also to the AIO to get all the fans swapped out with the sweet RGB fans. So, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that right now. I will do a bunch of this time lapse so that you guys don't have to just sit through and watch me unscrew stuff and put fans in. But different parts of this video will have different time-lapse sections and I will just showcase as we go through the build. So, here we go. All right, so here are the two fans that I removed. Not that there's anything wrong with these fans, but I wanted to go colorful on this new build. So we'll just have these as spares for maybe another project another day. All right, so I got enough fans, that way I can have max airflow going on throughout this entire case, and I made sure they could all connect to the same controller, as well as making sure that I get colored all throughout. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this first one out. This is one of the fans that will go into the case, and then I got a three pack of 140 millimeter fans that will end up going into the case and the AIO. Go ahead and get rid of that little twist tie. And there we go, nice. So we're gonna go ahead and crack this box open. I have the other cable kind of run, so that way it's ready to go. Get that 120 millimeter in there screwed in. Go ahead and get rid of all these cables. And we'll just pull one of these guys out. 
Nice. That is going to be much better than 120 fan with the top of the case. That'll be nice. Got those new fans in right there. Got that guy there. Got my 140 up top. So we are going to move on to replacing the fans in the AIO now. All right, so I got my last two 140 millimeter fans out. Go ahead and set these to the side for a second. And we need to take the cooler out. So this is the NZXT Kraken X62 AIO all-in-one water cooler. And it's a 280, so that's why I have the two 140 fans. Go ahead and remove that. All right, let's see here. So these are the fans that come with it. Just like with the case, I will not be using those. Let's see, not sure what that big old parts pack is. Don't need that fan. What is this? Liquid cooler, ah, installation guide. Probably gonna need that because I have never done anything before with water cooling. So it's gonna be an adventure. Go ahead and take the cooler out. Got some more cabling in there and we'll just get that out of the way. Get these other fans out of my way, not gonna use them. Go ahead and take this off. All right, and there is the cooler. I'm gonna leave all of this other stuff on. All right, let's see. Connect all cables before turning on. I'm gonna leave that there. That's the nice little pad for the CPU. So we'll leave that there. Oh, you know what? This is probably the CPU mounting kit. I bet that's what that is. Oh, and look at that. They even got a little box that says AM, or a little label that says AMD in there. How nice. So let's remove this. And there it is. Water cooling unit. How fancy is that? All right, now let's see what this instruction guide says. Good Lord, it's huge. What's on the other side? More stuff. Oh look, there's another flap. How flappy. All right, okay, yeah, so we got the in Intel installation bracket. Apparently that one is pre-installed, so we'll have to take that off. We'll put the AMD one on there instead. Okay, so since I have never done anything with a water cooler, I had to do a little research and figure out how in the heck I'm supposed to install all of this stuff into my case. So, research done, and according to the NZXT site, this is the best way to get this installed. So, that's what I'm gonna do. They said if you install this whole thing, like this onto this easy to remove bracket, then that makes taking care of all of it that much easier. So. That's what I'm gonna do. I like the idea of things being easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple of these lined up and we will go from there. All right, it took some doing, but I have the new Thermaltake RGB fans mounted up to the cooler with its bracket, everything. So I am able to now go ahead and slide that back into the case whenever I am ready for it. But what I'm going to move on to now is 
the actual motherboard, I need to put on a new backplate in order for the AIO to be able to connect properly. And I need the motherboard in order to do that. So we're gonna get it all set up to do AMD goodness and go from there. All right, so let's go ahead and take this bad boy out. A little tray that holds the motherboard. And we don't need the other stuff that comes in it for now. We'll just set that to the side. And we're gonna go ahead and get the board out. There we go. And here we go. Board time. There we go, those are in there nice and tight, ain't going anywhere. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and set the motherboard aside for a second. Bring the AIO back over here. Just gonna set all of this stuff to the side. All right, now with this, take off the little protective layer and we need to remove the Intel plate, install, the AMD plate. Come on, there it goes. All right, and let's see, the way that this is going to sit in the case, it's gonna be sitting this way. The AIO is gonna be over here. I just wanna make sure I have everything going the way that I want it to go. Let's see here, if that's over there, have that guy sit there, that should be fine. I don't think, let's see, do I need the hose to come out of the top? I'm not sure I do. I think if they just went out the side right there, that should be fine. So we'll have it sit in there like that, perhaps? Actually, it'd probably make sense to make sure whatever way the NZXT logo is, that's the way it's gotta go. So I'm gonna figure out which way that logo will show up and we'll go from there. All right, so it turned out there was a super easy way to find out which way this goes. Take off the film, look at the logo. <laughs> okay, so it needs to go in like this. That means I need to rotate this bracket 90 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and put this guy here. Oh, a little too far. Put it there, snap it in place. And now we will be able to get that installed. I'm gonna set this off to the side because what I need to do here is actually get rid of the thermal compound that they have on here because I got something way better. I got some thermal grizzly that I'm gonna put on this. So I'm going to take a little isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna get rid of that off the cooler. Luckily there is none on the CPU yet. Um, we're gonna get it off of there. I'll get a nice fresh coat on the actual CPU and we will go from there. All right, and it is now time to get to some of the good stuff. Time to put that CPU down. So we're gonna pop this guy out. We don't need the cooler that comes in the box, obviously. We spent all that time getting the other thing ready. We go right here, and bam. Ryzen 9 3900X, baby. All right, we'll go ahead and lift that little arm. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and let this just rest down in there. Very nice. Clip that bad boy down, and looky there. Nice new CPU stuck in place. Good to go with no issues. I would hate for there to be an issue. That would totally suck. All right, and now what we're gonna do is apply a little thermal compound to this guy as I just drop it into the board. And what's kind of nice, this gives you a nice little rubber squeegee so you can get a super just even layer across everything. So we're gonna go ahead and pump a little bit of that out. Oh, that is thick. Okay, and we just kind of paint that on a nice thin layer.
All right, so we are going to go ahead and get the memory installed. We are not gonna mount the cooler just yet. We're gonna wait until the board is actually in the case to do that. So I just gotta be mindful of that thermal paste on there. So we got my G-Skill memory here. Go ahead and open that up. Ooh, fancy, I got a G-Skill sticker. All right, so we wanna do the A2 and B2 slots. Okay. Fancy. I have never had RGB memory before. All right, there we go. The RAM is in. Move that to the side. And while we have it here, we are gonna go ahead and install my M.2, my NVMe drive. Let's go ahead and pull that sucker out. Apparently there's a little manual in there that got a little ripped up, oh well. And here we go. This thing is going to be lightning fast compared to my old machine. I can't believe how stinking small a hard drive is now, it's ridiculous. There we go. All right, so we got our M.2 drive in, we got our memory in, got our CPU in. I think we are ready to start adding stuff to the case. Awesome, here we go. So I have the board all screwed in and placed where it needs to go, so that means it is time to put the AIO in. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of fish this in where it needs to go. All right, so I found them. Apparently, they're in the bag with all the Intel stuff. Just have uh, four little thumb screws in here. I'm gonna get those out of this bag. There we go, four of them. And we're gonna screw those down. Make sure those are all where they need to be. All right, so that is installed, and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and officially remove the film on the mirror. Fancy. All right, so next I need to get all the connectors for the pump actually hooked up, but I also need to run the power supply. That way I actually have a place to connect everything else to. So I am going to go ahead and start on power supply cable management. Let's dive in. All right, so I got my EVGA 1000 G3 right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed into the case. That way I can start running everything from it. All right, so as you can see, I got a lot of cable management to do. I wanted to make sure I just had everything connected where it needed to go before I got it all organized. Go ahead and show you the interior real quick. So you can see, you got everything here. Got my cable running for 
my VGA right there, or not VGA, but uh, my graphics card. They just call it VGA on the power supply. So that will be the last thing to connect, and I just gotta do some cable management, tidy it all up, and it'll be time to turn this guy on. So I'm gonna get the last of this stuff connected, and next you see it, it will be turned on with all kinds of pretty lights. So here it is, the completed setup. There's the tower right there, running through its nice little light show. Got my perifs. And moving down here, you can see we got the power ramps for the whole PA setup. Got the printer off to the side now. Nice, clean, minimal setup rocking now. And here it is, the completed build. All those beauties inside there. We got those Trident Z RGB memory sticks right there. Got the Kraken X62 AIO with the thermal take fans on it and in the case. Got that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super. And of course, rocking that Hero. You can kind of see it in the back right there, the LED lighting up. So right here, I am running the benchmark of the old machine. And you can see the stopwatch in the corner to get an idea of how long it actually takes to run this benchmark. And I'm running it using Cinebench R20. I ran the same exact version on both, made sure there was nothing extra open or anything like that. And this one took forever to run. It wasn't fun just sitting there watching it build super, super slowly but you will see in a second just how much faster and how much more performance I get out of the new machine. And it's just awesome. Like, I can't believe how far tech has come in just a few short years and what it is capable of now. So as you can see, I am running Cinebench R20 right here, and this is to get a nice benchmark of the new system. Went ahead and loaded up the stopwatch there in the corner so you can see just how long it actually takes to get this benchmark run. And I gotta be honest, it is insanely fast compared to the other machine, and I could not be happier. So as you can see right here, these are the test results for my old machine. It scored a 1258, and you know, for a machine that was built that long ago, I would say that's a pretty respectable score. The machine was very good for many years, and the only reason I replaced it is because it was time for an upgrade, and I really wanted to get that new 12 core. And as you can see, here's why. It scored a 6556, so significantly better. Now, I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you guys stay tuned and check out the next video that I have coming up next week. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.